This is the solution to written homework 51. <clears throat> okay. So the first order of business is to find the critical points. So critical points. Uh, to remind you that there's two kinds of critical points. Uh, one kind uh, looks like this. So, uh, for example, we could have a surface It's like a tent. Uh, so all along that ridge there, so this is supposed to be like a tent. All along this ridge right here, there is no tangent plane. That is to say that if you're walking along that, that ridge, that corner there, uh, no matter how small you are, the tent world, the tent surface, never begins to look flat. Okay, then the other kind of uh, critical point is like if you're on top of, say, Sombrero World, at the very top, at that highest point, if you were very, very small, then the world would look flat, which is to say, well, because the, because the Sombrero World is smooth, no matter where you are, um, you can be small enough to where it looks flat, but at the very top, it's flat and horizontal, so that there is a horizontal tangent. So the analytic condition for this, the analytic condition for this uh, is that either this or this is undefined that's this condition, and the analytic condition for this one is that both uh, partials are zero. Okay, so then this one means, so this kind of critical point is they both have to do with tangency. This critical point is that it, this type of critical point is saying that there's no tangent, and this type of critical point is saying that there's a horizontal tangent. Okay, in either case, they have to do with the partials. So let's compute the partials. So the x partial of all of that is negative 6x, and then plus 4y minus 32 and the y partial of all of that is 4x and then minus so y squared over 2 uh, de partial derivative is just y so minus 3y and then plus 23 Okay, so these <coughs> are always defined so that is to say that these two things are always defined and 
and therefore we're only going to get this kind of critical point. So only that kind of critical point. Okay, that's good. Uh, let's solve the system of equations. So we want to solve both partials equal to zero. So negative 6x plus 4y minus 32 is equal to zero at the same time as 4x minus 3y plus 23 is equal to zero. And I'll number this as equation one and this one as equation two. Okay, so um, of the of the two possibilities uh, to deal with first, I think equation one is slightly easier uh, because, well, I could solve for y and divide by four, I'd still get a fraction, uh, but at least 32 is divisible by four, whereas because of this number 23, 23 is a prime, it's gonna definitely be a fraction. So from from 1 uh, I'll get the 4y by itself so from 1 we see that 4y uh, is equal to move everything to the other side so 6x plus 32 and then I can divide everything by 4 to obtain that y is 3 halves x plus 8 Okay, so now I'll take uh, that which I got from equation one and put it into equation two. So take that information and put it into equation two. Equation 2 is 4x minus 3y, but we're putting uh, that in, so that would be minus 3 halves x plus 8, and then plus 23 is 0. Okay, so let's simplify that. Uh, that would be 4x minus, 3 times 3 is 9, so 9 halves, uh, 9 halves x, and then minus 24, because negative 3 times 8 is 24, and then plus 23 is 0. Okay, so this is 8 halves minus 9 halves, so that's negative half. So negative half x, and then uh, minus 1 is 0. I'll move the x to the other side, so negative half, uh, sorry, negative 1 is half x, and then multiply both sides by 2, so negative 2 is x. Okay. So to determine y, I'll take that information and plug it into, uh, how, about, how about this over here? Okay, so then y is 3 halves, and then the x value that we know is negative 2, so negative 2 plus 8. 
Well, the twos cancel, so that's negative three plus eight. So that's um, negative three plus eight is five. So therefore, the critical point is negative two, five. Okay. <clears throat> so now, that so that's the only critical point for this function. Now we want to classify it. Okay, so we're going to classify it with the second partials test. We'll need the second partials. So the xx partial is negative 6. The yy partial is negative 3. The xy partial, which is to say the y partial of the x partial, is 4. And the yx partial Uh, that is to say the x partial of the y partial is 4. And just as a reminder, the fact that these are same is good. If we had determined that these were different, then that would indicate that we had made an error somewhere. So the point, negative 2, 5, classifier h, well, that's the product of the pure partials at the point in question. Minus the product of the mixed partials. But because the mixed partials are the same, uh, we can just square either one of them. So that the classifier H is, well, at 2, 5, the xx partial is negative 6, the yy partial is negative 3, and the uh, xy partial is 4, so 4 squared. Carrying out that arithmetic, well, that's 18 minus 16, which is 2, which is positive. Okay, so <clears throat> to remind you, there's three possibilities uh, for the second partials test. One of them is that it could be a maximizer. One of them is it could be a minimizer. And one of them is that it could be a saddle. And so the fact that it's positive means that we've ruled out this possibility. It's not a saddle, but it might be this one. It might be this one. It might be a min. It might be a max. And the way that we distinguish between those two is we check one of the pure partials. So xx at negative 2, 5 is uh, negative 6, which is negative. which means that uh, it is going to be a maximum. So it's this kind. So let's write that down. So therefore, negative 2, 5 uh, is a max.